So one thing I want to learn a little more about here is the particular foods that help menopause. So you already talked about soybeans, you know, specific uh, mature soybeans. What other foods can not only help menopause, but just uh, hormonal issues and diabetes as well? Okay. Okay. Let me um, describe how we do this. If, if somebody watching this has or knows somebody who's got hot flashes, I'll lay, let me lay it out exactly what we do. For the, for the diet part of it, it's completely vegan, no animal products at all. And then we keep the oil scrupulously low, just as we would if we were trying to reverse type 2 diabetes. Um, so very, very low or address type 1 diabetes for that matter. The soybean part of it is we start with the mature whole soybeans and you can go online. You'll see Laura brand or there are other brands of non-GMO soybeans that you can get on Amazon. The package arrives. You stick them in your instant pot or your other pressure cooker and throw them in there. Have about two inches of water on the top, cook them for 40 minutes and they come out just like pine nuts. Put them on a salad, um, in a soup or something like that. Some people even kind of blend them with their oatmeal and it just kind of gets in there. Uh, a half a cup a day is the amount that seems to work. Some people want a little bit more. Sometimes people divide it into a quarter cup in the morning, quarter cup at night. Experiment and see what happens. Uh, for extra credit, we have a lot of our participants travel. So what they'll do is one more step. When the soybeans come out of the oven, they put them on a baking sheet that's covered with some parchment, throw them in the oven, 350 degrees for an hour. They come out like dry roasted peanuts. And then they just put them in a bag and stick them in their luggage. And they've, now they've got their, their, uh, um, isoflavone rich soybeans with them. The reason that we've been, been emphasizing soybeans, you don't have to have soybeans. Um, but they happen to be an extremely high source of the isoflavones that are effective uh, against hot flashes. And when the, when the isoflavones go down to your digestive tract, if you've been on a healthy plant-based diet, you can, this is for extra credit, you can convert one of these isoflavones called daidzine. The bacteria in your healthy digestive tract convert it to another one called equal. Equal goes into the blood and it is the most supercharged isoflavone of all. And I believe that's the reason that Betty's hot flashes were gone in five days. She's on a really clean diet, healthy gut bacteria, eats the soy, um, the isoflavones go to Equal, boom, hot flash is gone. Um, just the other day, I got an email from somebody just yesterday. She said, well, mine were gone not quite that fast. It took me 12 days. That's <laughs> 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 like still, like, she, and she said, zero hot flashes. Now, part of the reason this is important, in, in my view, is if you got diabetes, you go to the doctor, and the doctor's focus is on not just insulin, but all the latest other medications. You turn on the television and it's one diabetes medicine after another, after another, after another. The pharmaceutical industry has got you hooked. And you can go to the pharmacy counter and you could say, I'd like to get a generic insulin pen, please. They'll say, what are you talking about? There's no generic insulin. You say, wait a minute. Insulin was isolated a hundred years ago. <laughs> You're telling me there's no generic. The cost um, is, is something that favors industry, mm. um, but it doesn't favor the patient. Right. The same is true with menopausal symptoms. Okay. Here's a huge number of women. Predictably, everybody's going to go through menopause. There are no exceptions. You are going to be a candidate for Premarin or something else that you don't really need, but it'll make your hot flashes go away. And then the prescribing information that's on the little sheet that the patient reads, says breast cancer, myocardial infarction, stroke, blood clots, dementia. You think, those are not side effects that I want. Um, what are the side effects of a plant-based diet? Good weight control, better energy, lower cholesterol, all the things that, that really work. And the only issue really is making this understandable to the patient that yes, I can do this. It really will work. It's not that much, much trouble. It'll work and you'll be so much happier. So there is an important role for the pharmaceutical industry, but I would like to limit them to their important role and leave them out of our lives beyond that. Um, so that we can use a healthy diet, whether it's diabetes, menopausal symptoms, or any of the other conditions that we've been talking about. Yeah. And so another condition I want to talk about here is 
do you feel that nutrition should play a bigger role in the medical approach to breast cancer and other hormone related cancers? Without a doubt. Um, with prevention, of course, um, there was a huge study from the Adventist Health Study 2 last year looked at dairy. Um, dairy contains estrogens, contains estradiol, that's a match for human estradiol. And the more cow's milk women consume, the higher their breast cancer risk. Um, we should be using diet as a preventive. Um, and soy can play a role in that too, if one wants. Uh, women consuming the most soy have about 30% reduction in their risk of breast cancer, which is important to emphasize because a lot of people have kind of gotten that the other way around. And the truth is clearly that soy is protective. Um, but we should go beyond that. If a woman has been diagnosed with breast cancer, the WIN study, Women's Intervention Nutrition Study, years ago showed that if she cuts the fat content of her diet, her survival is going to be better. The WELL study, Women's Healthy Eating and Living Study, showed that if she boosts her vegetables and fruits and, and if she laces up her sneakers, her survival is going to be better. So what do I do? The answer is I do all these things. I, I cut the fat, get rid of the animal products, bring in the vegetables and fruits and the healthy foods, and I exercise too. And we're going to be careful about other things like alcohol and others that play uh, ancillary roles in this process. And we see if we can't live better. Yes, there are, are important treatments for breast cancer, but I got to tell you, they have side effects that every woman knows about when she's in treatment. One of these uh, side effects, by the way, is hot flashes. Um, for 35 year old woman diagnosed with uh, breast cancer goes on hormonal treatments and suddenly she cannot sleep. Because every two hours, she's woken up in a pool of sweat. Um, and so we have not yet done a study in breast cancer patients with hot flashes, but that's coming up, obviously. Yeah, it's so fascinating how when you look at the research, all these different conditions, it comes down to the same conclusion. You know, eating a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet in certain situations, adding in specific foods like you talked about today. And... What I think is, you know, you've alluded to this today, but it's not being taught in medical school. So maybe you can share a little bit of how your organization helps get this information into medical school. And I'd also love to have you talk about the Barnard Medical Clinic and how people can work with your team of physicians and get some really high quality medical support. Oh, well, thank you for asking about that. Yeah, you, you're right. When I was in medical school, nutrition was really pretty much ignored. And I'm sorry to say that in the intervening years, that has not changed very much. Um, that's the bad news. The good news is doctors are getting enthusiastic about it, in part because, as you mentioned earlier, their patients tell them about it because, they, I mean, they read your book and they say, I want to tell you how I got better. Um, so doctors, they're, they're getting intrigued. And our annual conference that we have every summer, we've got more than a 1, thousand, 1100, something like that doctors who, who, who want this. Um, we have online continuing medical education that's very, very popular. So the doctors are into it. Um, and our clinic, the Barnard Medical Center here in DC, um, we have medical students from the George Washington University, which is where we all have faculty appointments, but, um, from other universities, uh, and some of which are overseas. Um, they'll come, the students and residents come from all over the world to, to learn the approach that we're, that we're using. Um, and they, it, it just invigorates them for so many doctors who thought, well, I'm just going to be a pill pushing sort of factory worker, uh, on my assembly line. Um, they suddenly discover that they're very different. They're now a guide who can help patients to take back their own health. And that's just so enriching.